friends, this is Abijah Baker. I'm Maria. Today I'm having a impromptu potluck brunch with some girlfriends. Some old, old, old friends from we grew up together in the neighborhood way back when. We've been friends for over 50 years and so it's going to be really good to see them. So you're going to, I don't have my, my chef's coat on, but I kind of miss it back here in the kitchen. But this will all be fixed up later because right now I got work to do. There's a few things I'm going to make. Um, the first thing is my tomato pie. That that thing is just a showstopper because it sounds gross. I'm not a fan of tomatoes, but I can't get enough of that. It's amazing. Then I'm going to make um, a quick fix puff pastry um, appetizer with spinach and cream cheese and garlic. Oh, it's so good. And then I'm going to make a watermelon punch. So uh, let's get started and we'll start off with the tomato pie. You start off with pie crusts. This time I chose to use store-bought pie crust just to save time. You'll be piercing the bottom of the pie crust with a fork. What you're doing this for is to let the steam and the heat escape from the top so it doesn't bubble. There's no rhyme or reason. Just piercing as many holes as you feel is necessary. 10, 12, 20. Your choice. And then you're going to take a, one layer of beans or rice or they've got these beads, but I just use pinto beans and I reuse them over and over. So I'm just going to scoop up a little bit. Put a layer on it. You don't want it thicker than, than one layer of beans because then the crust won't cook. This is just to keep it flat. So you're piercing the bottoms to keep it from bubbling. And then you're putting a little bit of weight on top to keep it from flat, to keep it flat. Now comes the fun part. This process is really kind of fascinating to me. I'm going to take a sharp knife and put an X across the top of each tomato. Each tomato, each pie will take about three good portion size tomatoes. Just an X. You want to make sure the tomato is firm, not soggy, but not green. Next, you're going to prepare your, your pan. This is the interesting part. I'm laying newspaper on the bottom of an extra large cookie sheet I have. And you're going to need a large work surface. This is to absorb the moisture that I want to remove from the tomatoes. On top of that, I'm laying a couple layers of paper towels. Now I'm going to make an ice bath, which is quite literally just a bowl of ice water. Okay, now comes the fun part. I'm going to boil the tomatoes on a low boil. I'll keep it in there for about 30 seconds. You'll see that after, I don't know, maybe about yeah, I'm going to guess about 30 seconds. The peeling will come up. I'm going to immediately submerge it into the ice bath to stop it from cooking. 
You see how the skin has separated? I boil a couple, I, sub I submerge it into the ice water, take them out and put more in until I'm done with my tomatoes. And the skin completely and effortlessly slides away from the tomato. Kind of cool, right? Continue this process until all the tomatoes are done. If you've ever tried to just peel a tomato with a knife, you're going to be really excited to do it this way. Look at how easy that is. A lot of it you can just kind of pinch off. It just comes off so effortlessly. I love this stuff. Ta-da! Beautiful! Okay, now comes the fun part. I'm going to take each tomato and give it a nice, good, thick slice. I don't want it so thick that it, well, it's going to take too long to cook, but I don't want it thin. Depending on the size of your tomato, you can get four, five, gosh, I've even got six slices out of the real big ones. Then I'm going to lay them face down, or up, <laughs> on the paper towel. And I use all the tomato, except for the tiny little bit of the core. These little pieces will fit nicely in the nooks and crannies as I build the cake, as I build the pie. I cut all the tomatoes, covered the pan, I'm going to get generously salt and pepper them. The salt is actually going to pull out the moisture as well as season it. And you'll see that when you're done with this, the paper towel is going to be just soaking wet. That's good. That means your pie won't be. You don't want a soggy bottomed pie. <laughs> Then you're going to let them sit for about 10 minutes. In the meantime, the pie crusts are done. And I'm going to put the beans right back into the bag to use another time. That's the only reason I have those beans. So I don't have to worry about losing flavor or anything. Ten minutes later, I'm going to come back and flip all the tomatoes over to season and flavor the other side and also release the juices from that side as well. Salt and pepper on this side as well.
and let it sit for another 10 minutes. As the tomatoes are setting, I'm going to take some basil and I'm going to chop it. Rough chop, coarse chop, rip it, tear it, it doesn't really matter. But I, I, give, a, I give a rough chop to this. And there is nothing like the smell of basil with tomato and mozzarella cheese. Caprese uh, pie is what I love to call this also. Lastly, we're going to make the topping that goes on top, uh, the crust that goes on top. It's not a crunchy crust, but man, it's got flavor. I got mayonnaise, grated Parmesan, shredded Parmesan, salt, pepper, and garlic. I'm going to mix that up really well. It's going to be really creamy. And then I'm going to set that aside. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, this is the fun part. Now it comes time to assemble. These nice big tomatoes make it easy to cover the bottom. Just kind of like assembling lasagna. And then sliced mozzarella cheese. This is caprese. Mozzarella, basil, and tomatoes. Perfect. Deliciously delightful. This is a side dish, really. Now, I take the sliced mozzarella and I don't want it to overlap so much and have overlapped in the center and then no mozzarella on the sides. I like it covered really well. And then I take some really good quality uh, turkey, smoked turkey or, or whatever. This is the one step I won't, I won't skimp on. Layer of basil <laughs> and then repeat. I like to do at least three layers of, of each. I prefer a thicker cut turkey. I confess I wasn't paying attention when I went to the deli and I got just sandwich slice, so I used more. And that's okay. Goodness upon goodness upon goodness.
Okay, now I'm going to put the creamy top on. Spread it thick, evenly. It's going to turn a golden brown. And it's going to just... There's something about this combination that just takes it over the edge. I want to make sure that I get all as close to the crust as possible. See that? Yep, I don't want that to show. When you're done, you're going to bake it in a 350 oven for about 35 to 40 minutes until it's golden brown. Seriously, isn't that just beautiful? Okay, you guys, you've got to try that. I'm telling you, it's just going to blow your family away. Next thing I'm going to do is, is a quick fix. It's a puff pastry pinwheel. And I'm just going to take out everything. Everything is right from the store. I'm not making anything. So I love these recipes because they're quick, they're easy, and they're knockout delicious. So I've got um, cream cheese, uh, mozzarella cheese, just packaged, and spinach and Parmesan cheese. Not, not much, but that's okay. A um, little bit of salt and pepper. Now, when you get your, your spinach, your frozen spinach, um, it's going to be wet. It's frozen, so all that condensation is locked up in the, the box that it comes in. Drain it really, really well, and then you're going to get a ball of green. <laughs> so just before you use it, just, just crumble it up, just to make it easier to, to mix around. All right, and this is so fast. This is so fast and, and easy. I think you've probably had it. It's not, it's good. I like good. So uh, let me show you how we're going to assemble it. That's all you can do. Okay, over here I've got my puff pastry coming to room temperature, which is how you want to use it. Then I've got my cream cheese, and I'm, I'm really just going to put everything together and go. I want to mix my cream cheese first, though, um, to get it to make it soft. And this is just for ease of mixing, that's all. And you want the water out as best as you possibly can because you don't want your, your pastry to be soggy. I've got um, minced garlic, salt, and pepper. smells so good. All right, so let me finish this up. Okay, so I took up the beaters and I used my spoon just, just to put some meat into this. And I'm going to put some Parmesan cheese. Now, however much you want, that, that your call, okay? Same with mozzarella. Then I'm going to show you a trick on how I slice puff pastry to make it nice and even and not smushed on the ends like, you know, when you're making um, cinnamon rolls, you have to cut them in just the right way or they're going to be pinched on the ends. And then you have to try to make them round <laughs> before you put them in the baking pan. Let me prepare my pastry. All right, the pastry, puff pastry is so pliable and soft, which is exactly how you want it. You want to flour your board a little bit and open this up.
this is one of my favorite things to work with besides the fact that it's easy as can be it, it no matter what you put in it it's just delicious you always uh, flour your, your rolling pin and you're just going to stretch it out a little bit not a lot I love working with this stuff. On another video, I'll show you how to make it. <laughs> that's that's a wild that's a wild thing to try, boy. So if you're if you're feeling brave, well, let's let's have some fun with that. All right. So I'm just gonna keep it in a rectangle shape, and I'm going to spread half of this on. Now this is thick, but when when it bakes it's going to melt and it's going to be really creamy so just stick with the challenge <laughs> you know what i think i'll do i think i'll the puff pastry comes with two sheets so i might just do one sweet and one savory and if i do that then I'll put the whole thing on here. That'll make it a very thick treat. But remember, it, it's you're going to roll it up. So you don't want it too thick. You don't want more stuffing than, than pastry. Just take your time with this. It's thick. It's cream cheese. So it's, it's you know, it's thick. But man, I wish you could smell it. I don't know if you could hear that, but our poor dog is getting <laughs> groomed and she is not happy. She hates that blow dryer. How do you guys groom your, your pets, your babies? All right, I'm gonna finish this up and um, show, you, show you what it looks like when it's done, okay? Okay, sorry, I got <laughs> flour on me. One of the reasons why I don't bake in my clothes and just use my chef's coat. Okay, so it's nice and even. I'm not going to worry so much. I like to get it as close to the edge as possible because I don't want to waste anything. And we're just going to roll it up. Much like you do when you're making the cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Poor baby. Okay. Then you're going to kind of just pinch the ends together. Just mush it into itself. All right. Now, if you were to, um, let's see if I have a knife. If you were to cut this, you're going to get that, that pinched. I hate that. That drives me crazy because then I've got to stop and make them pretty on, on each side. Or, you can, well, I guess I'm going to change. That's all right. Um, you can use dental floss. I know, right? Put it underneath. Okay, now, let me see. I want you to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to do it towards you, okay? So, I'm going to put dental floss underneath, and I'm going to just make... A knot. I'm just going to push it like I'm going to tie a knot. That's it. It, it clung to the um, spinach. Perfect, round, and ready to go. I'm going to continue doing this. Isn't this a great trick? I'm telling you, I love this for my cinnamon rolls. That's it. And they are, of course, going to puff up. So I'll spread them apart a little bit. All right, so yeah, one, one sheet is gonna give me a pretty substantial amount of, of treats. All right, let me finish this up and show you. 
Okay, so I got about 16 or so um, on here. I'm gonna do the other one. Then I'm gonna take this with an egg wash. And an egg wash is just one egg with a little bit of water scrambled up. Uh, the water's gonna kind of keep it calm <laughs> and the eggs are gonna give it a beautiful gloss and crust and When you do your cinnamon rolls and you do this, you guys, you're going to, you're going to just, <laughs> it's not one of the coolest little things. I think I got lazy and, and <laughs> decided to, well, I got, I got really tired of having to pinch each thing back into a circle. You can also cut cake with dental floss. Did you know that? Just cut it, you know, bigger, of course, than, than the actual uh, cake. And then if the cake is this big, Cut it longer, wrap it around your fingers, and then just pick it up. And if you don't want to pick it up, you, you run it through and then pull it out the sides and you're going to get a real clean cut. It's kind of fun. It, cake, cake cutting is, is a messy task. Now, if you wanted to, you could top this with some uh, grated Parmesan cheese or, or shredded Parmesan cheese. You can top it with... Um, I wouldn't top it with salt because there's a lot of che uh, salt in the cheese and you're adding it already, but um, yeah, you can top it with, oh, you know what else is really good in here? In the mix, you can put um, artichoke hearts, you can put jalapenos, you can top this with the jalapeno right on top and the, the cream cheese would cool it off and the jalapeno would wake them up. <laughs> So that's it. I'm going to finish the other one, put these in the oven for about 35 minutes at 350. And you're, you're going to, you're going to get an, an amazing treat. So let me finish this next one. Okay. This is, this is the, uh, the party and this is how it's going to happen. I got the girls sitting ready to, to drink their juice and their wine and their champagne. And we've got the food on the table ready to go. You've seen my tomato pie, and you've seen my tin wells, and uh, the other food that the lady brought, I'm dying to just dive in. And so, this is it, girls. Make the most at, most at a girl time. Until next time, happy baby. Ah, oh, that was fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe.